Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 11.2.4.5, Configuring Secure Passwords and SSH. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Cisco RNS Intro to Networks Version 6 curriculum. Now, in this particular lab assignment, we have um, a PC, a switch, and a router. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up some remote login information. Now, we have previously done that through line VTY04, but we have been using Telnet. If you remember back uh, when we covered that, Telnet is highly um, not secure. Okay, so it when you send information across, if you're remotely logging into a router or a switch that has Telnet set up, if someone is sniffing the network for those packets, they can actually literally see in plain text if they can find that packet, which isn't hard to do, exactly what your username and password is for your router or your switch or whatever device you're Telnetting into. So in this one, we're actually going to set up SSH, which is a secure method of remotely logging in because everything sent back and forth is encrypted. Okay. So first, they have us configure the IP address and on PCA. So let's do that according to our chart up here. So we'll go to IP configuration, 192.168.10.2.255.255.255.0. And our default gateway is 192.168.10.1. OK, so we got that set up for our PC so we can have connectivity eventually. Now we console into RTA. There's a console cable here. So if we go back to PCA, go to terminal, click OK, we'll see our configurations for uh, RTA come up. OK. Just going to make that a little bit smaller there. All right. So it says configure IP addressing on RTA and enable the interface, configure the host name. All right. So I'm going to do the host name first. So config mode, host name, RTA. And we're going to configure IP addressing. So the only interface they have listed in this table over here is G00. So I'm going to do interface G00 and then IP add 192.168.10.1.255.255.255.0. No shutdown. All right. And I can exit out. Remember, you can also set a description there on the interface, and it's just description. You know, you can say connection to switch zero, right? Because it, when you're looking at show run, it's a little bit easier to have a description set. Okay, next it tells us to encrypt all plain text passwords. So to do that, our command is service password dash encryption. All right. So that encrypts all of our passwords. It says set a strong secret password of your choosing. It doesn't really matter um, which one you choose. You just want to do enable secret. And I'm going to put um, secret starting with a dollar sign, basically like that. All right. Um, it doesn't really matter what you set, though. Just make sure you remember it. OK. Um, the next one says set a domain name to rta.com. Now, up until this point, we've just been doing general stuff that we have, you know, done before in the semester. Now below this step down, we are going to be setting up SSH. OK, so we can remotely log in from very far away from another device and um, be able to test that. OK, so first we're going to do IP domain name. RTA.com. OK, so when we do that, um, remember, it is case sensitive. Uh, so you make sure you want to set that correctly. OK, this is setting the domain name. Next, we're going to use a set a username um, and it says username, any user, password, any password that is meant for you to actually um, you know, put something, insert something in there. Don't use that. So username, I'm going to put um, Cisco user. And for my password, um, I'm going to use the same, or I'm going to use Cisco. All right. So Cisco user and my password is, is Cisco. Okay. Now it says, now that I've got that set up, we're going to use that in a moment. 
um, that's when you're remotely logging in. So you kind of have to set everything up on the router, then remotely log into it. Um, next, we're going to generate some crypto keys. So the command is crypto key generate RSA. RSA are the type of keys that we are generating. Now, if I press enter here by default, they're going to go to 512. They want me to use... Um, 1024 right here it says generate 1024 bit that's just a little bit stronger of an encryption so I actually want to type in 1024 here then press enter if I had pressed enter before I was going to use 512 which is the default so make sure you change that okay now I'm going to set my login block for 180 attempts or within 120. Okay, basically what this does is, is it blocks anyone for three minutes who fails to log in after four attempts within a two minute period. So within two minutes, if you log try to log in incorrectly four times, then it's gonna block you for three minutes. So you got two minute period there where if you're trying to log in incorrectly, all right, and then you get the fourth time. After that fourth time, it's going to block you from trying to log in for three minutes. What does that prevent? Brute force attacks and dictionary attacks where they're just constantly, constantly, constantly trying over and over and over again. Um, automated, like especially like uh, uh, an algorithm that's just running in a virus to just try and test out different passwords and username combinations. Um, whether it be dictionary words or whether it be just a brute force attack. Um, now, of course, there'll be those times where you accidentally log, try to log in four times, but then after three minutes, you can successfully log in. But it is try to prevent those, okay? Oh, wait. I forgot my dash there. There we go. Um, and again, you can piece your way through that command with the question mark as well. It'll kind of give you some more details as you go along. All right, next, that kind of sets up the information to use and the parameters. Now I got to tell my line VTY04, which remember is my remote login, and there's five channels here. So if you try to log in first, you're going to be assigned channel zero, channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, or sorry, channel four, that means five users can log in simultaneously if I had five usernames and passwords set up, okay? Next, transport input SSH, login local. What that does is it tells me when someone's trying to remotely log in, you're going to use SSH. It uses Telnet by default. We're not going to do that. So transmit input SSH, that's what my transport protocol is going to be. And then my login, look to the local username that I set up, which was Cisco user and the password Cisco, okay? All right, now I can exit out of there. And the last command says to save my configuration. So if I don't want to exit out, I can do copy, or sorry, do copy, run, start. Press enter twice and it saves it, okay? Now, that sets up everything nicely. Um, again, there's some that you can change around, like if in a real world situation there for as far as commands go. But let's try to remotely actually log in to RTA. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to PCA, I'm gonna close out of the terminal, I'm gonna go to the command prompt. All right, so the command we wanna use is ssh-l. And we're going to put our username in here, which was Cisco user. Okay. And then we want to specify where we want to go to. So the, the IP address of our router, remember, is 192.168.10.1. You hit enter. It says it opened our connection. And our password is the one we ended up setting, which was just Cisco. And boom, you see that we have our router prompt, right? So now we can do like our enable, we get a password, which we set before, which was the one with the dollar sign to spell secret. So it's basically dollar sign, E-C-R-E-T, all lowercase letters after the dollar sign. And then we can do like a show run, right? And see everything that we've got where we configure stuff. Um, basically everything, right? Even down to what we configure for SSH. So again, that is how, and then you can exit back out to close your connection. Now, if we tried to telnet, remember you can do, just do telnet and then type in 
uh, 10 or what's this 192.168.10.1 hit enter and you see it says open but then it closes it back out because we don't have telnet set up so all we can use is ssh which is a good thing we're forcing people to use something more secure all right so hopefully that explains ssh why it's better and why it's more secure and how to configure it